Thank you for watching the following service recorded live at our 2013 summer camp, Unifying Glory. And she said, I'm in pain all the time. And, uh, and we know that when Jesus was here, when, when he did deliverance, if people need healing, he just healed them. But if they needed healing and deliverance, he delivered them. And then they got healed. Well, I just, at the end, I just uh, always ask God to, to heal every scar the demons have left. Because whenever demons have been in us or following us and they've influenced us and they've affected us, they leave scars in our bodies. It can be physical and can be mental scars. So I just asked and prayed and I just said, Jesus, I ask you to just heal. I said, Holy Spirit, just heal this woman's leg right now. And uh, heal her other infirmities that she said she had. <clears throat> and as I... And as... Uh, as I was going along, she put her hands down on her leg and she said, and she started moving her leg and she said, my leg is going numb. And then she said, it feels like it's tingling going down my leg. And then she said, it feels like heat, just like heat is just going right down my leg. And Donna just said, get up and walk. She got up and started walking and she had no pain. I believe that lady got healed. You know, it wouldn't have, and it wouldn't have happened if we didn't do our part. And you never know when the next time you go for prayer and somebody lays hands on you and prays for you, that may be the time you're going to get your healing. This was her time to get that. Uh, so it kind of uh, lifted my spirits, and uh, uh, I'm kind of on a high. <clears throat> and uh, now... I'm going to talk about something tonight, and I've been up here a lot of times. How many of you have never heard me before? Probably most of you, probably at least half of you. Well, uh, I'm going to talk about, or try to talk about, uh, uh, spirit of offense. Now, we all get offended. It may be a spirit, it may not be a spirit. That's the tricky part. We're going to try to figure out when it's, we're dealing with the spirit or whether we're just dealing with flesh. Because if I say something to any of you in here that you don't like it, I've offended you. And so you are offended. You don't like it. And you may feel angry. You may feel uh, resentful. Uh, if you're married and you got a husband and went out and committed adultery, you're going to be offended if you're on the other end. <clears throat> and you may have loss of trust. But I think... This master spirit of offense, and I've dealt with this, I've dealt with offense all my life. I get offended easily. 
because that's the way I was, I, I, <clears throat> I was kind of put down as I was growing up. And so when you're put down as a child, then you put up barriers and walls and you don't you have a lot of self, lack of self-confidence and you have a lot of uh, lack of self-esteem. And I've dealt and struggled with, with a lot of that all, all of my life. But you know, when we do that, if we don't deal with it, we can let the spirits come in and then we stay that way the rest of our life. Well, we'll never get out of it. So, uh, offense goes along with betrayal. Usually if someone betrays us, they've uh, offended us. So I'm, we're going to talk about that tonight and then we're going to deal with that. But tomorrow night, if you can come back, <clears throat> we're going to get serious about some things. And when I want to discuss generational curses. Now, if I, the, the, uh, and I'll just mention what I've learned about that. It was an absolute revelation to me when I learned that probably 75% of the demonic activity that every one of us struggle with or that, that we deal with is generational. Because of the Old Testament, you go back to Exodus, you go back to, uh, Exodus and Leviticus and you'll see what God said. God told the children of Israel, he said, if you do what I tell you, all these blessings will come upon you. So they were blessed. But he said, if you don't, and you rebel and you sin, which they did, then he said, all these curses will come upon you. And there's 60 some verses of, of uh, I mean, uh, yeah, ver- uh, of curses that God pronounced. Of course, what they are, <clears throat> are the things that we struggle with. Financial problems, marital problems, physical problems, infirmities, mental problems. Those curses, he said he would pronounce upon the children of Israel. And then as you read further on, uh, they wanted to know what they could do about that. And God said, repent of sins, transgressions, and iniquities. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about iniquities again. Not many people will talk about this. The reason I do this is when we do deliverance on people, when demons talk, and they talk quite a bit, when they do talk, and they tell me, I have a right to be there, and I'll say, where did you, what gives you that right? My father, my mother. Well, it's not necessarily the father and mother. It may be four or five generations back. We dealt with one person a number of years ago, uh, several years ago, that was from uh, Dominican Republic, and this demon talked, and he said, uh, I came down through his great-great-great-grandfather from Spain. And then he said, before that, came from Africa. And what did he do? And he told us what that individual actually did to allow this curse to come upon him. And, of course, <clears throat> but notice God's, God said, for, he told everyone of us in here, repent of sins, transgressions, and iniquities. And we do that. And they did. And God said, I forgive all of them. He forgives even the iniquity. But God put a but in there. He said, but the iniquities will pass down to the third and fourth generations. That means that I don't know what my great-great-great-grandfather or grandmother did on my mother's side and on my dad's side. What my Irish ancestors did or any other ancestors that I had, my German ancestors. I don't know what they did. But God says the iniquities that were in them passed down and down and down into me. So I'm born through my mother's womb with all the iniquities, whatever they are, which I don't know about. It came in from my mother and father. But the iniquities that we'll talk about tomorrow again are usually those things that you struggle with and no matter what you do, you were never able to get victory over. And usually it's things that... You just, and so you just decided, that's just the way I am. That's just me. And it's a lie a lot of times. So, uh, but as we've done deliverance on a lot of people, and I call these spirits out, and they tell me they have a right to be there because of the iniquity, they won't come out. They don't have to come out. They have a right to be there. So now my job is to Break, destroy their legal right. And how do we do that? In, uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, in, in Leviticus, God said, repent 
of the of sins, transgressions, and iniquities. So what do I do? I repent of the iniquities of my mother and father and their mothers and fathers four generations back, minimum four. And then, and they did that in the Old Testament, but the iniquities just kept passing down. <clears throat> and so, when, but when Jesus came in Galatians 3.13, Scripture says that Jesus took upon himself and became a curse of the law. Well, what is the curse of the law? It's those curses, it's those iniquities that came down that the Old Testament people were not able to deal with, but Jesus took that on himself, and so when I break those iniquities and renounce them, and, 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 I, and then I go put them under the blood of Jesus, and I, and I cancel them according to Galatians 3.13, then I'll call that demon back up and I'll say, do you have a right to be there? And it will tell me no. I said, well, I said, are you, are you ready to go? No, I don't want to go. It's my home. I've been there all my life. All this person's life. I like it there. And it's hilarious to watch them talk and tell you that. And they will do it readily. They, and they'll say, and they may start whining and say, well, she needs me or he needs me. I make him happy. I keep him happy. And they do in some ways. But it's in the wrong way in, in the end. And so then I say, but you understand that you don't have a right to be there anymore? Yes, I understand that. Are you ready to go? No. Are you going to go? Yes. Well, I command you out now in the name of Jesus. And then they resist and they resist and they hold on. And so that's when we have to ask angels to reach in and pull the claws and the hooks out. Because many, if we're older people and we've got, and we've got uh, demons rooted in us that have been there for 40 years... They've, uh, they're entrenched in us and they've got hooks and claws sometimes. And sometimes you feel them pulling out. We did deliverance on one man one time and he started coughing up blood. I mean, it tore loose from inside of him. It was, it was this demon did. But he felt different when it, when it actually came out. So, um, so we have to learn some of the tactics on how to uh, defeat the enemy and how to get them out. Now, what we've got to be careful, though, is everything we do that's not godly is not a demon behind it. It may be, but may not be. Where you look to see is the demonic, is if you struggle with an issue, and no matter what you do, you can't get victory over it. That's where we say, maybe there's something spiritual behind it. And uh, because if it's, if it's a matter you haven't crucified your flesh... That's a different issue. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to try to do, do deliverance on someone that just wants a quick fix. Well, I have this problem. Just go somebody. They just cast it out. And then I can go back and live just like I was before. We can't do that. We've got to commit uh, to want to stay free and to be free. So tomorrow we're going we're gonna to go more into the generational curse. And then we're going to go through an exercise again, which I've done before here. We're going to repent of those iniquities. And I want you to think tomorrow about whatever you, that, is, uh, that you struggle with that you don't have victories over and, uh, or that you saw. I ask everybody, look up to your mother and dad and, your, and their fathers and mothers and their fathers and mothers and tell me what you saw they never had victory over. And I will guarantee you, you've got the same problem. Now, you may not manifest it. We've had, we've had cases where they'd be a brother and a sister, or two sisters. One of them's got all these problems that they, they saw in their mother and father or in their mother. And the other one, you don't see anything. Doesn't mean that one you don't see anything doesn't have the spirits. It's a matter of what's our will. I can, my will can be so strong that I can block them from coming up for a while. But a lady came to us years ago. She was a pharmacist in Nashville. <clears throat> And she had everything under control in her life. And she made a vow years before that nobody is ever going to hurt me again. And, uh, and, uh, and she put like Humpty Dumpty up here and she put all, all the walls were built around her. And she, did not, and she would never allow anything to hurt her because when, as she was talking to us, she didn't think she had needed any deliverance. She said that uh, her mother didn't want her 
made her go live with her aunt, and her aunt sexually abused her and verbally abused her and physically abused her, and she made a vow, I am never going to let a male ever hurt me again, or a female. But she had a boyfriend, and she'd been with him for five years, I believe she said. And so she said, I'm going to confront him because either we're going to get married or else. She said, no more sitting on the fence. And she confronted him one day. And he said, I'm not going to marry you or anybody else. She said, I'm a homosexual and I'm not going to get married. She didn't know that. They, she said, I went into a mental ward in the hospital. For the, see, Humpty Dumpty fell. She had all this balance, kept everything under control. It just took one thing. And the walls came down and everything. She crashed. And But when we did deliverance on her, it was unbelievable what came out of her. And she was just absolutely, totally surprised because she thought she could control everything in her life. Okay, so this offense. So I get offended. I get offended every week, seems like. The problem is, it's probably, it's, I mean, we all get offended. It's how do we take it? If we allow it to, that we never heal and we never get over it and we just constantly, uh, every time anybody says anything to us or does anything or, or doesn't do something, we get offended, then maybe it's gone from just the physical things in life occurring that I've got a spirit in me of offense that is uh, operating and just keeps everything um, like it is. Now, <clears throat> got to find out where I'm at here. What did I do with it? Um, uh, uh, okay. If 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 I've got in order for a fence to work, what I'm going to have to have, it's going to have to be connected to like betrayal. And so what does exactly this demon do to us when there is a spirit of offense and betrayal operating? Uh, we will end up going through life with broken trust. I can't trust anybody about anything. In other words, my truster is broken. Now that's different probably to someone that's married and they find out their husband's been committing adultery. That's a broken trust. And I don't trust him. And, but if you keep that hurt your entire life and you don't ever get over it, then we probably are carrying around that spirit of offense and betrayal and, uh, and we will never heal. I also may have broken confidence. I don't have confidence in myself anymore or in someone else. And what that sets up is inferiority, insecurity, shame, condemnation, and guilt. So if I'm not careful, and if I don't deal with that, and we're going to have to talk about how do we deal with, the, uh, with it, uh, then if I'm just constantly in that state, then that's how, that's how I'm operating. I mean, I'm so fragile that just, Everything it said to me is going to just uh, cause me to have these uh, sensations and feelings. And maybe this, maybe this is a spirit that's operating. Also, my character may be broken, like a fragmented soul, or my mind, my will, my emotions. I can have broken visions, and I can have uh, focus is broken. Uh, and then there's lying and deceiving spirits involved. So, if it's not a spirit... But so that it doesn't set itself up and become a stronghold in me, what I've got to learn to do, or what I've had to learn to do for a number of years, is as soon as you recognize something, uh, see, if, if Miguel says something to me and puts me down to someone else or to me, and he really hurt, makes, hurts my feelings, I've got a choice to make. I want him to pay for it. Is the physical part of me? I want him to. I want to come. I want to retaliate. I want to get even. I want to. I want to come back. But what I what I don't want to do is I don't want to forgive him. But that's the very thing I'm going to have to learn to do. 
And I'm going to have to speak out to God and say, God, I can't do this by myself. And I want, and I don't know, um, I don't think this is true, what's been said. At least I don't perceive it that way. And, uh, and God, I, I want you to forgive him and bless him. But I don't want to bless him. The, the, man, the male part of me, the flesh part, doesn't want to do that. We want to hurt. And so, uh, but if I don't do that, then I'm the one's going to suffer later. Because I'm all, all I'm going to end up being is feeling uh, sorry for myself. I'm going, to feel, um, in, I'm going to feel inadequate. I'm going to feel insecure. I'm going to, I'm going to have all this hurt. I'm going to have all this uh, pain. I may have physical problems. It, just, it can just go on and on and on. So, um, I've talked to some of you before about unforgiveness. You know, when anyone hurts us or is offensive to us, I don't... Uh, God knows that I live in a flesh body. That it, and in the flesh, I can only do so much. So God showed me a number of years ago, one Wednesday night... That he said, Roger, he said, you can say, I want, to, I want to forgive him or her all you want to. But he says, you can't do it by yourself. And I can't. And once I learned that concept and recognized that. And how I learned that was from a lady that came to us. One of the, actually the first person that we did ministry to. The one that just totally... Uh, Changed my whole outlook on about deliverance. Uh, we were having a, <clears throat> a home meeting, and this uh, lady we went to church with was there, and we knew she was a Christian. I had always been taught nobody. I mean, it's just understood that Christ, that Christians can't have demons. The Holy Spirit and demon spirits can't live in us at the same time. And I, I mean, I just took that for granted. But here we laid hands on this lady for some sickness. And she fell on the floor, and the scream came out of her mouth that was ungodly. And I looked at Donna, and I said, this is not God. And I know this woman is a Christian. And that God just spoke to me and said, if you're going, we're going to get some people healed, we're going to have to get them delivered first. So she's the first case that came over. So what? when she comes over, she tells us what happened. So when I was a little girl, about 12 or 13 years old, the best friend of my parents. Uh, I was, um, uh, uh, sexually molested me for several years, just over and over repeatedly. She said, I told my parents what had happened, and they said, you're a liar. Said, he's our best friend, and he would never do that. Of course, it devastated this lady, and... It even got to the point where her mother put her in a closet, she said, and closed the door and kept her in there for hours, <clears throat> a dark closet. So here she is, 30-some years old, married, she has children. She has a fear of intimacy, which is what that does, that creates when that situation happens. She's afraid to get intimate because afraid she's going to get hurt. So she does what she's supposed to be, is a, try to be a wife. She had children, but uh, we knew that if she was going to get free, she's going to have to forgive that man that raped her. And I still never forget that day she spoke out in our house and she said, I can't forget that, I can't forgive that man. He hurt me so bad. And you know, she's right. Many of us out here, probably in the same situation, you can't do it. If you think you're going to do it, you're mistaken. It's not going to happen. And she said, I can't. And she can't. <clears throat> but I remember what God told me. God said, I don't care what you can do. God said, I'm only interested in what do you want to do. God wants your will. What do you want to do? So she said, yes, I want to, but I can't. I said, okay, that's fine. I know you can't. I said, but you got to tell God that. So we just led her through and I said, tell God, talk to God, tell him how you feel. And say, God, I can't forgive this man. He's hurt me so much, but I want to. 
And when she said that, and we asked God to do a circumcision of her heart. And would you believe, a week later, she came back. This lady was all smiles. She said, I've reconciled with my, I've forgiven my parents. I've, I've forgiven that man. She said, if I could meet that man right now, I would feel sorry for him because something in him was so powerful that he couldn't control that I would literally feel sorry for him. She went from hating him to feeling sorry for him. Now she can get set free because she's allowed those demons to be in there all those years of hate, bitterness, rejection, self-hate, self-condemnation, uh, rape. And we call those spirits out and they came out by name. The male name came out. Well, a couple of months later, we kind of <clears throat> stopped working with her for a while and her husband called me one Sunday night about 11 o'clock and I usually go to bed at 10. So I'd gone to sleep. Phone rang, woke me up. And he said, I need you. Come over to my house. He said, my wife's laying in the hall. She's out of her mind. Just laying in there and just, I mean, just out of it. And he said, something is manifesting in her. Got a hold of her. And well, now I'm a little bit angry because this demon's woke me up. So I go over there and I'm ready. And I just looked at her and I just put my fire. I said, who are you in the name of Jesus? And, this, and, the, and, and out of her mouth came this male name. Her husband was absolutely startled. He said, I know that man. She said, I blocked that out all those years. She said, he also raped me. And she said, it was so painful, I pushed it down and buried it and never brought it up again. But it was manifesting in her and came out. And so, uh, of course, that's what we want to do. When something real painful happens to all of us in here, we would like to stuff it down and push it down. And you know what the psychologists say, even Christian psychologists, they, they say that uh, um, um, what do they say? Un, um, anger turned in, turn inward when we're angry and we don't express it. We turn it in and push it down. Depression. So we get depressed. Now we let in spirit to depression. Now we've got to get them out. So, uh, so this, this generational curse of the law is so, is so real, and we want to go through that again tomorrow and, um, and cover that. But tonight we're going to do a few exercises. Um, not everything, but we'll do some. Um, I'm trying to figure out uh, how to cover what we need to cover at the same time, get everybody prepared. Some of you in here have never heard me before, and you may not believe a word I'm saying because it doesn't make sense, uh, or you've never heard it before. You may, if any of you still say that I don't believe a demon spirit can be in a Christian, okay? We've had lots and lots of people tell us that, especially old line Pentecostal people. They say, well, when I was saved, we were told that when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in, and when he comes in, uh, if there's any demon spirits, they can't stay there and they have to go. And I look at these people, sometimes 50, 60 years old, struggling with these issues they've had for 40 years since they've been saved. And I said, now let's get this straight. You're telling me that when you were, bo that, that when you were saved, uh, born again, that the Holy Spirit came in and every demon in you that was in you or every curse that was in you are gone. Because they tell you, the curses are gone. They can't stay. But I said, look at yourself. Forty years later, you're still struggling with the same issues. Obviously, something hasn't happened. And when they finally have to agree with me, and, and then they want to tell me, okay, I know I've heard, this, I've heard people talk about, say, uh, repent of the iniquities of your parents, and, uh, um, and, uh, and I've done that, but that's all they did. See, they didn't, they didn't use Galatians 3.13, and they didn't destroy the legal right, they just repented. And then they say, well, okay, uh, I asked Jesus to deliver me. 
I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I said, Jesus, take this from me. Take this depression from me. Take this fear from me. Take this uh, infirmity from me. And I've asked Jesus to deliver me. And said, so nothing's happened. And I look at them and I say, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus paid the price for our deliverance. And, and I said, yes, Jesus is sovereign and he can do anything he wants immediately. And he does a case sometimes. But that's not what his word says. His word said, and I said, let's do what Jesus said. He said in Galatians 3.13, in, in uh, Mark 16, he said, use my name and you take authority over evil spirits and you drive them out. And I said, you've been asking him to do this. And he didn't say that. He said, you take authority and you drive them out. I said, let's do it God's way. And when we do, we see deliverance. And the woman was amazed. Because it's just, she, I guess we say you perish for lack of, ig- <clears throat> for, uh, uh, out of ignorance. Just didn't know how, that there was a different way that she should be doing things. And yet we've seen people that have, uh, have gotten saved and we've, they said I was instantly delivered of nicotine or alcohol. Never want, craved it again. And other people, we have to drive it out. So yeah, God is sovereign and we, we realize that. And God could do anything he wants instantly when he wants to. But it's not his way. We try to, I try to operate scripturally. Uh, so, okay, so back to those of you that may think, well, demon spirits can't be in me. So let's just say who you are. When I look out here, what I'm looking at is not who you really are. Every one of you, you are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. So all I'm seeing is the body. The body is just a carrying case of who you really are. So when you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, he, the Holy Spirit comes in and Jesus comes in to your spirit man. Remember, you are a spirit, comes into your spirit man in 100% control. And no demons in your spirit when you accept Christ. But I've still got the same body and the same soul that I had before. It hasn't changed at all. Nothing's changed. Well, the Holy Spirit comes in our spirit man and his assignment is to help us transform our, our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, our conscience, subconscious, unconscious, which will then work on our flesh. And so that's the process, and if we can get people to understand that, then we can uh, see people set free. Of course, everything that's in us is not a demon. I mean, I may just have, um, if I procrastinate, it doesn't mean that there's a spirit of procrastination in me. There may be another spirit. Because lots of times, people who procrastinate and put off and won't ever get something done, you're going to find this fear behind it. They're afraid if they, if they do that, they're going to get criticized or something's going to go wrong, so they won't do it at all. Now, they don't realize that, but oftentimes there is a spirit behind it. Uh, but, uh, but, of course, not always. Let me talk a little bit about... Uh, there's a few people in here that have Jewish backgrounds. We've had the most interesting sessions with Jewish people because most Jewish people in America today, if you go back and look at their ancestors, a lot of them are Russian, a lot of them are European, and they've been run out of countries, and they've had to flee their life, their ancestors, four, five, six generations back for fear. And what do you think is going to be in them? They don't trust people, and they're going to be fearful. But they don't know that. They just know that's how I am. And uh, we ministered to a, a Jewish lady in Memphis one time. And she said, don't, she said I can't even talk to my parents. She said, They'd kill, my dad would kill me. He disowned me. He said, if he even knew, I came over and talked to you. But uh, that was at, at, at that time. And she said, uh, uh, and when we got into uh, working with her, because she had a lot of fears, this fear from uh, 
It was, you know, Russian ancestral fear just was just enormous in her. And she just started crying and screaming. And she just, I mean, literally, it, was, it just came out of her. And, of course, that's wonderful because that's what we want her. We want her to get set free. But a lot of, uh, and not just Jewish people, but a lot of, we don't know what our ancestors went through. Most of my ancestors are, are German on uh, my dad's side. Miller is German. My mother was half Irish. My mother was raised about 20 miles from right here, actually, down at a little place called Caledonia area. Uh, a little place called Villanova. It had a little sign up. Still there. It says Villanova. Uh, but she's pure Irish. Uh, her dad, Barber, was her name. Her dad, <clears throat> I think her father was, I think he's probably British. That's, um, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, most of my ancestors. But I don't really know what all went on. I just know a lot of uh, my German ancestors. They came to America for religious freedom. The uh, the Tsar in Germany in the late 1700s was persecuting anyone that wasn't Catholic. If you were a, and they were Lutheran, and if you're Lutheran, they persecuted them and they starved them. They almost starved to death. So they. And poor little Queen Anne of England, the one good thing they say she did is when she became queen, is she uh, said, I'll pay for the passage of any Germans, uh, Lutherans, any German non-Catholics that want to come to America. And she paid for it, and they all came over here that way. And so, but these people came over here out of fear and persecution. So, I mean, just be amazed if you knew what all the background is of all of you here. If you knew what all went on with the ancestral background, and and so when judgments are made and uh, uh, we open ourselves up when things happen, we let spirits come in. Um, then we what we end up doing is we just take it for granted. This is normal. This is just how I am. And we don't real we don't think there's anything that I need to deal with. Now we don't do deliver we don't do one on one deliverance on anybody. Unless they are a Christian and they have to want to stay free and we want them to be committed to somebody, a spiritual leader if they can. So if they come back, because I'll almost guarantee you when you have deliverance, you'll probably be on a high for about a week. That's the general rule. You just feel great. You just feel like burdens have just been lifted. And then all of a sudden you get up one morning. That's what people tell me. And it's all like it's all back. It's like, and but they but they but they don't do anything about it, and they just they just accept it right back in, and they can let those spirits come back in. What we want to do is when they, when any of you when you have deliverance, if they feel if you feel like it's back, it's not back. They're just sitting on your shoulder. They communicate with your mind, and they say. You're not really free, or they make, or they, or, and if you don't go on the defense, the attack, they will come back in. So what we've got to do is when you, when you, when you have deliverance, and when you get up one morning and you feel like it's back, <clears throat> if you try to speak yourself and say, no, you're not coming back, and you've got the authority to use the name of Jesus. Right. Everyone in here, he said, use my name said just as if I'm speaking. And so when so if if people will do that, all of you in here will do that when you feel something trying to come back, say no, you're not coming back. I have authority over you. Now leave me right now. And Jesus, I ask you to put angels around me right now. Said I need warrior angels to literally uh, uh, build a hedge of protection around me and put up uh, put walls to protect me. And I will guarantee you if you will do that, they'll go. If you don't, if for some reason you fail, that's why you got to get up on the phone, call somebody in here you know that you can call <clears throat> that has the same authority that will work with you and pray them out. Pray them off and they will leave. Don't ever let them come back in. Now, people say, well, why is it so hard to get some demons out? Remember, if you've heard me before, when deliverance is like peeling an onion. 
And so I can call up, and I can see manifesting. I mean, we've seen manifesting, maybe on some of you here, but I've seen them lots of places. Let's say, let's just say a spirit of anger. Anger, violence, and rage. And this thing, and you see it, and they're screaming, and this thing is coming out, and you see, visibly, you see it leave. That, those spirits leave. And the first thing you want to say, and don't do it, well, they're all gone. I'm free now. That's a mistake. Don't ever say that. You're only free of that one. You don't know if there's more yet, because there probably are more. And the reason... And so those people that, and then they don't come back, but people that will come back and have more ministry, the, set, the next time we do deliverance on that same person and we get into that same spirit, it'll be even stronger. And they say, I don't understand. I thought we got them out last time. No, it, that's not what it, what it means is spirits are like, like an onion. There's layers. But if you've got five layers here, under each other, and I've got anger here on top, and I've got anger four or five layers down deep under here, that, that, those demons down at the bottom, they're not coming out tonight. You're only going to get the ones on top out. But I'll tell you, as we start peeling that onion and we get that one layer out, and then the next layer is not as strong. See, the strong men are being p- pulled away. Then the next one, and the next one, and finally we get down to the, to the, to the master spirit that's down at the bottom. And, he, and uh, then, uh, then we get him out. And sometimes the reason we don't, we're not successful the first time is spirits can be interconnected. I've told some of you the story before about this man that came to us that had uh, anger, violence, and rage, murder, and death. <clears throat> He's very macho, construction type worker. He said, I've always been this way. He said, if I, I don't like what you say, I just hit you. He said, I don't care if I knocked you on the ground. He said, actually, I wouldn't care if I killed you. But he said, I've never killed anybody. He said, when I was in the United States Navy, I was always in the brig, always fighting, I was always in trouble. But he said, my dad's the same way, so I'm just like my dad. He said, he said that's just me, because I'm like my dad is. He had this whole conclusion of all of his life that that's just me. Then no, it's not demons. It's just me. Well, the reason he came to the house was his wife brought him. She wanted some things for herself. And she said uh, she was married. They were, uh, it was her second marriage. Her first husband was, was, uh, was killed on the job, electrocuted in an electrical uh, thing. And so she married this man who had now become a Christian. He wasn't a Christian for most of his life. And he said, uh, she said, uh, uh, my grown children, one was married, is, uh, came to see us a week ago. And she said, he said something to my husband and said he didn't like it and he hit him. Hit my son-in-law, the wife's son-in-law. And they said, now my wife, wife said, she says, now my daughter won't talk to me. I got a problem with my husband. He just laughed and he said, there's nothing wrong with me. He said, it's just how I am. He said, I've always been that way. So, uh, but he said, if you want to try deliverance, if you think there's something there, go ahead, go ahead. And we tried deliverance on him and it get absolutely nothing manifested because he didn't believe. See, if there's doubt, disbelief, and unbelief, they're not coming out either. So we got to get everybody to... So I've got to get you to the point of being willing to say, God, I don't know if there's something in me that's not from you. In other words, demonic. But if there is, I don't want it. But I don't know what it is yet. But if there is, I don't want it. So, a few weeks later, phone rang. She says, we need to come. We need to talk. She brings him back over. And he said, uh, she said, uh, we said, what happened? He said, well, <clears throat> one of his construction workers, he was a maintenance supervisor on a golf course, said he said something to him, and he said he hit him. And they said they called him in the office and they fired him. Now he said, God's got my pocketbook. I got no job. He said, I think I do have a problem that I can't control. Now he's ready. And so, okay, so we leave it. But my goodness, when we talked about him, about his father, 
And he said, if I brought a school a person home from me at, with me uh, at, from school, I said when they met my dad, they never came back. They were so afraid of him. And so, but he had this conclusion in his mind that because I'm just like my dad, that everything's okay. That that's normal. And so, but of course, I knew immediately in my mind said, I know what we got to do. What do you think we got to do? He's going to have to repent of the iniquities of his father and his father's father and mother and father and mother four generations back. Repent of the iniquities that have allowed anger, violence, rage, murder, death, and hate to come into him. Because that's what's in his dad. And it's what's in him. And he did. And we broke it and we put it on the blood of Jesus. And we canceled it according to Galatians 3.13. And then we start calling them out. This time, there's manifestations. This time, he puts his head up here on his hand up here. He said, my head feels like a vice grip on it. He knows now. The demons are telling him, letting him know they're there. And I'm calling them out, and they're not leaving. And we, and we wonder, what are we doing wrong? We know we're doing the right thing, but they're not turning loose. And here's why they don't, sometimes they don't turn loose, and we've got to do a better job of this with, in deliverance. Is, in his case, he gave me the clue because God showed him a vision. And he said, and he doesn't normally get visions. He said, I see, uh, he said, I see a cup. He said, just like in front of me, like he held his hand out. And I said, what's in it? He said, fluid. I said, what color is it? He said, it's purple. I, and God just said, that's blood. It wants to kill. That's the, represents that spirit wants to kill, wants to hurt and kill. But then he said, but then when he floored me when he said, "There's a," he said, "I see a rope hanging down." And he said, "What does that mean?" And and God just said, showed me and said, "What's a rope made out of? It might have a hundred little tiny fibers interwound around each other, and when they're all together, it's strong." I said, "That's what's going on in his head." I said, the reason these spirits individually are not turning loose, they're all connected together, like a rope. Like, if I locked arm with him, my arm, and you call me out to command me to go, I'm not going anywhere, because he's not going to let me. But if, but if you call both of us out, we're going to have to file out together. And so we start doing that, more of that now, and, we're, and we see more success in deliverance. Uh, so... Uh, it's not so easy just calling out one spirit sometimes. Although we try to do that. I mean, obviously we like to do that. So, where are we at? I don't know. <laughs> I've rambled around, but I felt like, I think this is some things that this is what I meant to say. But, Let's just deal with a little bit of, in case it is here, some betrayal, some offense, some loss of trust in some of us. And let's just uh, repent of uh, whatever we've done to allow those to come in and, uh, and, and repent also of the iniquities of our mothers and fathers and their mothers and fathers. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see what do I want to do. So see, when we do deliverance, and of course we've already, well, we need to do this. Because demons have to know who you are in Christ or they're not going to do anything. And so the first thing we have to do is express ourselves and tell them who we are and repent. So let's everybody do it. Just after me, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. Come in the flesh. To destroy, to destroy the works of the devil. You died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. And, rose and rose again from the dead. And now confess, and now confess all, of all of my sins. And I repent. And I repent. Thank you for cleansing me. Cleansing me and redeeming me. Redeeming sanctifying me. Sanctifying and justifying me in your blood. Lord, I have a confession to make. I am not always loved. 
I've judged certain people. I have been betrayed. I've carried offense. I've held on to things that I uh, didn't like to hear. And, and, and I've, uh, I have broken trust. I have broken confidence. I have loss of trust. I, have, I've, I carry inferiority, insecurity, shame, self-condemnation, guilt. Uh, my soul may be fragmented. I may have broken mind, broken will, broken emotions, broken vision. I may have given up, even trying to do certain things, because I feel like I'm going to fail. Uh, I've been, I've been put down. Uh, by different people in my life. If it's my mother or father, I want to forgive them. I ask you to forgive them if they're living. And bless them. I've judged other people. Your word says when I judge others, that the same judgments will come back to me in the form of curses. If I've ever said, as a male, I'm never going to marry somebody like my mother, and I've judged my mother by that, then God's Word says, I'll end up marrying somebody till I drive her to be like my mother. And God, I don't want that. So I repent of all the judgments I made when I was a child towards other people and probably towards my parents. So I break those curses that I put on myself and I put them under the blood of Jesus and I cancel them according to Galatians 3.13 which says Jesus took upon himself and became a curse of the law for me. Now, demons that I've allowed in through any judgments or through any unforgiveness, you have no right to be attached to me or to follow me. And when we call you out, you're going to leave me peacefully and quietly in Jesus' name. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, I now renounce, break and loose myself from any demonic subjection to my mother, my father, grandparents, or any other human being, living or dead, that have dominated me in any way. And I thank you, Lord. For setting me free. Okay, now, the, now I'm going to do some things. Now, Lord Jesus, I, we need your help. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask you to set, keep your angels around each one here. And if anyone needs an angel, if, uh, if uh, any demon spirit does not obey what, we, what we're asking or commanding them to do, I want angels to reach in and pull them out, pull the hooks and claws out, pull the spears out, if that's what if that's what is needed, just reach in and get them. Take and but I but I want them taken away from here, and I forbid them to go into any other person or to attack any other person <clears throat> or any family member. In Jesus' name. Now that spirit of betrayal and the spirit of offense. That's that. If any of those spirits that are in this room, in any person or following any person, we're taking authority over you now. I want those spirits that have caused and are causing loss of trust, those spirits that are blocking any of us in here from being able to trust certain people, that loss of trust, even though that person may have said, uh, I will never do this again, we still, you still struggle, that I don't know if I can really trust this person. 
those spirits that are that are, that are blocking trust come out right now loose yourself from every person in here those broken trusts those spirits that are that are just cause you to cause your heart to just be broken because because you have uh, you have lost your trust in someone uh, uh, you have been betrayed uh, and it's and 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 you've just pushed that hurt down and all that hurt and all that unforgiveness I command those spirits to leave right now those spirits of unforgiveness just come out right now and leave in Jesus name those spirits of uh, broken trust come out the broken confidence come out in Jesus name in Jesus name Jesus name Those of you, when I ask you right now, is there anyone in your life that you, that you would say you've tried and you cannot forgive them? They've hurt you so bad. There's something in you that says, I can't do it. Does anyone have that? If you do, we need to raise our hands. Because they've got to come out. Because what's blocking it is there's a spirit of unforgiveness. And what I want you to say is after me. Say, God, I've been hurt. I want to forgive this person or several people that have really hurt me. And God, I cannot do it by myself. I need your help. I want you to circumcise my heart. And I want you to change it. And God, I'm asking you now, Bless that person in Jesus' name. Now, those demons of unforgiveness come out right now. Those spirits called unforgiveness come out right now. Those spirits that have been blocking, turn loose and come out right now. Turn loose and come out in Jesus' name. (coughs) In Jesus' name. I want the shame out. Those spirits of shame and guilt and self-condemnation and false condemnation come out right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And when I say come out, I mean come out of come out of the body, but also come out of the soul. Come out of the conscience, the subconscious, and the unconscious. I want nightmare spirits to come out right now. I want those spirits that only come in when you're asleep and something just torments you. I want all those tormenting spirits to leave right now in Jesus' name. All of those tormenting spirits, those nightmare spirits, leave right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want those spirits and and some people in here that you, you don't feel like you were ever wanted. I want those spirits of being unwanted come out right now. The spirits of unlovable come out right now. There's something wrong with me. I don't measure up. I feel I feel unlovable. I want those spirits out right now. In Jesus' name. Come out right now. I want the false burdens out. There's num there's several people in this room that are carrying burdens they're not supposed to carry. You're carrying you're carrying it's called false burdens. I want everybody to say, God, in the name of Jesus. I don't want to carry other, other, I don't want to have false burdens. I don't want to carry burdens of other members of my family. That's not my responsibility. I've been carrying them all these years. And I'm tired of carrying them. So I want to give them up now. So false burdens manifest up. And come out of me in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now, how many people felt something when we went through that? Did you feel something? come out and now there's there's a lot of hurts in a lot of people here too I want all the hurts to come out there's gener- there's hurts that go all the way back to childhood come out right now this lady is tired of carrying hurts she stuffed them down I want them out 
Tell them to go. Say, I don't want to carry them anymore. I want them out right now. All of it. All the hurts. Come out in Jesus' name. All the hurts. All the pain. All the grief. I want all that buried grief come out right now. The buried pain come out right now. All of it in Jesus' name. Turn loose. The false, re- the self-rejection come out right now. Come out right now. All the rejection spirits. That whole family of spirits of rejection. I want the strong man, the gatekeepers, and the doorkeepers. Open the gates and doors and release them. And I command them to go. Angels reach in pull them out. All the rejection. All the rejection. I want those spirits of abandonment come out. There's abandonment, there's abandonment in here where you've been abandoned at some point in your life or your ancestors were. I want those spirits out right now. All the abandonment come out right now. Thank you again for watching our services of Summer Camp 2013 Unifying Glory. For more information, call us at 905-308-9991 or check our website at www.eagleworldwide.com. Check our product store for great products. Have a wonderful day. God bless. What a wonderful season that we're in, a season of tremendous blessing. And these waves are coming and coming and coming, and I believe that's part of the whole purifying process and bringing forth that prophetic generation. And uh, how many of you have been enjoying the week of the school, the prophets? I want to tell you, it's good to have the prophets in the house. Something wonderful, something special happens when that corporate anointing for the prophetic is in the house and people begin to gather together, some great things happen. You know, the testimony with uh, Sister Charlene, almost everybody in the ministry, in every church, in every auxiliary ministry, were all birthed in revelation knowledge and confirmed in the prophetic. Somebody say amen. amen. Being led by the Spirit. A lot of wonderful things, and everything that's happened here on this campground is absolutely miraculous from the way God showed it to us. And, you know, there's a huge vision. We come in to see it here now, and, uh, you know, you see everything seems like it's in place. It wasn't quite that way even just two months ago. But some people really have gone out of their way to make this place what it is for each one of us to be able to host us like this and uh, the, the folks that are doing that are, are uh, certainly that are in charge of that are Reed and Victoria Grassick and the staff and the team they have here hey and if you're part of the interns can the interns stand up where you at interns we got some there's some over here and some over there Whoa! glory to God they're doing a great job wonderful it's so beautiful to see what you're doing and to see the, the fruit of your labor. I want you to know we really appreciate you. You know, this is a big vision. This thing's only just begun. Some of you may not realize or know what's happening right now, but we're in the process now with the city of getting uh, going in for approval uh, to further develop the property here. One of the things that we're going to do, uh, and we've been in for some preliminary meetings, we're going to put a big air structure here. Just on the other side of this tree line, it'll probably be somewhere around 150 feet wide by 250 feet deep. It's going to be big. It's going to be really big. Big enough to have like a soccer field inside. I mean, that kind of big, eh? And, uh, and youth teams and uh, athletic teams will come in and practice there. It's going to be uh, a center for performing arts. Uh, uh, our school of ministry will probably be moved up there. Just a whole lot of things are going to happen there. And our summer camp services will be over there. We'll be able to host up to maybe 1,500 or more people will be able to be seated in there with a platform. Just beautiful. How many of you know that the tent is a real concept in God? How many of you enjoy coming to a tent? Well, the dome is a 21st century tent. Amen? Yeah, come on now. Heat, air conditioning, artificial surface. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and there's a lot of other things we're going to do. We're going to put a swimming pool in. We're going to put volleyball, basketball, some paddle boats on the lake. Just a whole a playground for the children. There's a lot of things that are here. 
And last year, we started the process of raising some funds, uh, preliminary funds, to go in for engineering and things like that. But uh, just this past week, in fact, just in the last few days, uh, one of the families who have been real, how many of you enjoyed the testimonies the other night by, the, by uh, Michael and, and uh, Michael and Herschel Snyder? One day, beautiful testimonies, wonderful, about their family, about their life. You know, their family has have been dramatically impacted here at the campground by the camp staff and by the Lord on these grounds. I'm telling you, something special happens when your feet touch ground here. Something wonderful happens. This has been dedicated to the Lord and good things happen. Every year we have many testimonies. But theirs is really something very powerful and very unique to them. And it's a real family type thing. And their family has gotten together and prayed and feel led of the Lord to give us a camp challenge, a dome challenge. This is for the dome itself that's gone up. You can see it over here. There will be a little building in the front. But for the dome itself, and they're going to give us a dollar for dollar matching funds challenge of $36,000. <laughs> Hallelujah. So every dollar that we raise from within what we're doing here at the camp, they're going to match dollar for dollar up to $36,000. Somebody say amen. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. And they talked about it in $18,000. Yeah, feel free. Now you know where it is. Everybody got directions to it? Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, in the, uh, in, in the Hebrew and in the Jewish uh, uh, traditions and cultures, 18 is a great blessing number. Hmm? And a lot of times they give in, in intervals of 18. And this is, uh, how many of you believe in for a little double blessing? And so we, we believe in for a double blessing. So uh, it's going to be a great summer, and we feel that this is a launching time for us, and we feel that there's a huge transference of wealth that's coming. All kinds of wonderful things are happening right now in the midst of all the shaking around the world. Isn't it just like the Lord to bless his people? Mm -hmm.